Hello, Ender Sword here again, this time with a video on a concept called the Critical Path. It's a concept used in anything from construction to projects and corporations to video games like Star Trek Fleet Command to kind of plan out which things, which resources, which prerequisites to something, some goal in the future cannot be moved or are most mission critical to what you're trying to do in terms of the actual timeline uh, that you are in. Uh, with a game like Star Trek Fleet Command, the number of resources, the number of materials, the number of prerequisites for things has increased more and more over time. And the number of things that draw on those resources over time has also increased. So there's an increasing demand on each one of those things. There's alternate things that you can spend things on, tons of different paths you can choose to go down. And so you can often paint yourself into a corner, consume too many of those resources that turn out to be really important later on and end up really bottlenecking your progress because you're missing one specific thing, one key component uh, to everything. So I wanted to discuss kind of how you can plan out your gameplay so that you're able to see a big bottleneck coming up or really target a particular future goal that you have that you want to complete and make sure that what you're doing in the meantime is not leading to a point where you have 80% of what you need, but there's one big part of it that you don't have or are unprepared for, or that you accidentally spent without realizing it was gonna become uh, important later on. So just wanted to talk about that concept. Um, I'm gonna use myself as an example for this, but obviously it's uh, very applicable across the board, um, what you could actually use it for. Um, but in my position, I'm currently at level 49, and I'm planning to go to level 50 soon. So I've got pretty much everything done. I've got this one gun uh, undone, and I'm ready to go up to a uh, level 50 operations. A tiny bit short, I'm currently scrapping a ship. The moment that's done, which is actually later today, I'm going to be ready to go up. But I'm not going up right away. Uh, I'm planning things out uh, ahead of time. So what my goal, though, would be as I enter into the 50s is to look at what is essentially the next big, big target of mine. And for myself, that's going to be what level 53 ship am I going to get and what is my plan to get there in the most time efficient way and the way that leaves me very balanced and able to afford that thing uh, once I actually arrive at it. Um, so I can plot out for myself a little bit of a critical path diagram and I usually would do this only in my head but uh, just to make it a little more clear we're going to look at what my present situation is and the direction that I'm going and what prerequisites do I need to fill in order to get to the end goal that I want uh, which would be the ability to build a north cut when I hit level uh, 53 or more specifically when my shipyard hits level 53. Uh, because of course just being ops 53 doesn't unlock it you need to you need to do additional buildings so at my current state uh, as you just saw pretty much all my buildings are at 49 there's one or two uh, lag behind ones there but anything that's a prerequisite is already done um, and I've got enough materials pretty much to move up today if I want to. Uh, I'll probably wait for the next leaderboard uh, in order to do that and take advantage of the fact that I'm spending a lot uh, of resources to move up. Um, but basically I can go at any time. So my current situation is that my Federation and my Romulan are locked at 1 billion. My Klingon is much lower, currently about 200 million. Um, and I'd like to move that up to a billion uh, by the time I get to the point uh, of about level 43. But the real, uh, the real prerequisite to this is going to be the Federation faction. So in order to unlock the ability to buy these blueprints, I'm going to need to be at the Guardian level, which is at 1.4 billion faction. And I'm currently at 1.05 or something uh, billion faction. So uh, 1 billion, 50 million, something like that. Uh, so what is the time that that's going to take? Shipyard obviously is the hard requirement, currently at 49, need that to get to 53. What are the resources required to do that? I've kind of found out based on my current uh, 
efficiency levels, what are the bare minimum things I need to build in order to get to that point. And then of course there's the actual credits in order once I unlock the blueprint as a buyable thing, do I have enough of the credits to be able to do it? Uh, so I'm currently at 216,000 of the Federation credits. In order to just buy all 150 blueprints, you need to be at around 450 uh, credits to do it. So with all those things in play, I, I then look around, are there any prerequisite researches that I need to do, uh, anything that absolutely must be done before I'm allowed to go to this point. Uh, for this case, I don't believe there really is anything else that's required other than the building itself. It doesn't look like there's uh, any large scale prerequisite research or anything that I need to do to get there. Um, so I could basically take these three elements and say, what is the time that each of these is going to end up taking for me to get to where I need to be. So if I look at the credit side first, uh, if I just do my dailies, if I do the uh, Borg faction uh, conversion thing, where I trade in the nanoprobes for some of the faction, then I can get about 1,200 a day. If I do my dailies, I'm gonna add up to about an additional 1,000 per day. There are going to be events that come up uh, over the course of the month, over the course of arcs. There's usually the faction hunt stuff that's going to give you an extra few thousand. There's usually things mixed into the month to month arcs, but I don't know for sure what those are going to be. But let's just say conservatively, I'm going to get about 2,200 of the faction credits a day. So it's going to take me about 106 days, a bit over uh, three and a half months in order to be able to get there if I just am relying on the faction credits to do it. So that's kind of starts my path of 106 days is the earliest that I could have everything needed to get the North Cut. If I look at the faction and kind of say, now again, if I just do my dailies every day, if I do kind of some light killing sometimes, but not like hard grinding, let's say maybe I kill 25, 50 ships a day, uh, Romulan ships in this case, since I want to raise both Federation and Klingon, I can get probably about 15 million uh, faction a day. That's going to vary a lot, obviously, depending on your level and what your current faction level is. Uh, at my point, that seems to be about what it adds up to. And that's without spending anything on, like spending any other resources like uh, away teams or, or Borg stuff or whatever, uh, specifically on faction. Uh, I can get about 15 million a day. So it's only gonna take me about 24 days to get from where I'm at and add another 350 million uh, faction to it. So this one is relatively light, but I would like to, you know, certainly get the Klingon a lot. I want to ultimately triple lock these at a billion before I go really, really far in, in one direction. And then the other one, which is a lot harder to estimate, is what are the actual resources that I need in terms of uncommon? Uh, luckily, to get to 53 shipyard, I don't need any rare or anything, and I'm not going to worry too much about the common because you can always replace that with uh, latinum at the time, although I'm sure that would be a lot of it. Um, but we're going to focus on the uncommon and say, what is the rate approximately that we're going to get uh, some of this stuff from talking to players in their 50s and looking at some of the past like mission arc um, sort of things or, or like you know monthly arc sort of things it seems like you can get about 600 a day uh, of the uncommon that includes the refinery as well which is obviously pretty inconsistent some days you're going to get nothing some days you're going to get several hundred it, it depends uh, but it seems about in that range so i'm going to estimate about 87 days assuming that it's relatively split up to be able to get the actual materials that i need to do it so right away this whole thing is saying hey on the faction just kind of stay the course, you're probably going to be fine. And this tells me that I can kind of cheat on this one a bit, since I also want to raise the Klingon faction to be at a billion. I cannot do some of the Federation dailies, which would otherwise hurt the Klingon uh, faction. And I can do all the Klingon faction dailies, even though they would hurt the Federation one. So I could actually slow this down to a point that I'm only getting about 5 million a day on the Federation, putting more on the Klingon side to try and bring that one up, to triple lock them faster, 
and I know that that's, a, that's not a critical path for me. I can let that slip by quite a bit and I'm still gonna be able to get to the point that I need. On the materials one, there's gonna be other things to spend on that are optional along the way. So this is if I basically only spend on exactly the buildings that I need in order to be able to get to that shipyard. But there's obviously other researches that I'm gonna unlock right away. Some of those are gonna be things that I can use for PVP. They're gonna be things that are better for you know armadas, repair efficiency, things like that, that I wanna look into. Um, so my ability to do that is going to be also flexible that I've got a little bit of slack in here and there may even be things that if I pursue a certain path then I can actually gain more efficiency on these materials in the buildings themselves so if I have to spend an extra 10 15 percent to go down a research path that gives me an extra 10 percent efficiency for one of these materials or an efficiency for future ships or efficiency on repairs, things like that, that may be worth it. So I have some room to deviate uh, along this path without slowing me down too, too much, but it's fairly tight. I can't just go spend whatever I want without slowing down uh, what my end goal is gonna be. So there's a point there where you have to make essentially a trade-off to say, do I want to slow down my end goal by another week, another month, in order to do these things that are worth it in the meantime? Or am I just gonna laser focus on my goal and, and go for it uh, there? The other one that is on that critical path, which it seems to be on the surface level, pushing uh, the num amount of time that it could take for me to get to this uh, unlock is just the faction credits. So if I'm just earning this 2200 a day, and I know it'll probably be a little more once you add in some other random events that come up, uh, so maybe 90 days, let's say, is there anything else that I could do along the way to speed this up uh, in order to cut down on the amount of blueprints I need? So are there other sourcing for that? Are there any of them in any missions? For the North Cut, I'm not sure. There probably are. I know there are for the Corvus. Um, I've already got some of them, so there probably are a few that I could get for missions. There's probably, once I get my faction up to a certain point, so since this is a target that I think I'm gonna arrive at early, as soon as my faction is at 1.4 billion, I'm gonna be able to spend away team credits uh, once a day to get a blueprint a day. So let's say that I end up doing this in the 24 days. Um, you could do it a little faster, a little slower, but let's say by the end of next month, I'm, I've got the faction I need. I've got a lot of away team credits that are saved up and I can start buying, buying blueprints. For every blueprint I buy for this, I need 3,000 less of these credits. So if I get there essentially two months early, two months before I have the prerequisite amount of credits uh, to get there, I can start buying the blueprints long before I have the shipyard available. You can buy, I think, one, two, or three of the credits, but, or the blueprints, but the cost goes way, way up. So ideally, you'd like to just buy one a day because uh, it's hard to get enough away team credits to stay at that high level a lot. But if I'm there, you know, 40, 60 days early, and I can knock out 40 to 60 of these blueprints, then all of a sudden this cost comes from 450,000 down to like 300,000. Uh, by the time I'm there. Um, and then of course, like I said, there could be other efficiency research that I can do along the way that may be, may be actually helping me, even though it seems like a little bit of a detour, it looks like if I spend this amount of gas, I can actually save an extra 10% gas on every other building or every other research done in the future. And so that may be worth it. So that's the basic idea behind the entire thing is just planning out what your path is um, in order to in order to kind of uh, make sure that you're not painting yourself in a corner and that you have the things that you actually need at the time that you need them. Um, and a lot of that can be done, you know, I, I'd say the probably the average player is somewhere in your 30s and the first time I really felt this as a player was when you were approaching your epic ship. 
uh, because that's a huge cost at the time. It's very unlikely that you have the faction credits to just buy this at the time that you hit level 34. You've been spending faction credits very likely before on some previous ships. You may not have skipped appropriate things. Uh, for instance, I did a Saladin, but I just never built any of the level 32 ships. I just kind of skipped past that entire thing. Um, but I didn't quite know where I was with uh, faction. I was in Federation and Romulan, but I wasn't close to like locking either of them at 30 million yet. Um, and my Klingon was way, way lower. And so it was kind of a weird balancing act between all of them. And I wasn't particularly conserving a lot of things. I had a lot of wants that you had at the time. At this point, I don't buy any of these recruitment credits anymore. But at the time, in my 30s and low 40s, I was still buying those. So every day, you were kind of consuming some of the resources that you were also trying to save. As you're upgrading officers, of course, that's another trade-off that you're making. If you're upgrading something from a tier four to a tier five, that could take like 12,000 credits. That's an extra full week of savings uh, that you need to be doing to get to the point that you want to go to. Uh, anything alternative you're doing, like if you're going to upgrade a uh, survey ship or anything else, that again is taking things out of your resource pool uh, to do it. So you want to be looking at what are the long-term uh, planning options that I have? Am I being efficient in what I'm doing? For instance, uh, it's perfectly fine, obviously, to still be buying these recruit tokens, but you want to be looking at, well, which one's the most efficient to do? Here for 100, you're getting 500. Here for 60, you're getting 500. Here for 300, you're getting 3,000. So you start to cap out here at what the maximum efficiency is. And then for some reason after this point, instead of getting more efficient, they actually start to get less efficient again. And for seven, 730, you're now getting 4,500. So you're paying more than twice as much and you're getting only 50% more. And then here again, you can they put these options in so that you can kind of rush them and get more credits, but you're starting to play a ble pay a bleeding rate cost uh, in order to be able to do that. So you really want to be planning out, if I'm getting this many credits a day, what am I spending each day? What can I afford to spend each day in order to still say, say that I'm a level 32 player. I know that I want that epic when I'm hitting 34, 35, and I've got 50,000 of my faction credits. I want to know that I'm going to be able to hit a point uh, where I can afford to buy 150 of these blueprints or however many left I need uh, at the time that I hit that level. So I know that given the rate that I'm earning versus the rate that I'm spending on officers, which are also important, that you're going to balance those things out so that when you arrive at that level, you've got the resources required to do it. You've got the faction level required to do it. Hopefully you have the materials required to take it up because you don't just want to build it. Ideally, you'd like to build it and get it to tier three, tier four, probably in your first day or something um, to be able to do it because that's when they kind of start to get strong. Nobody likes a tier, uh, like a level one ship um, right away. So you want to be balancing that sort of thing out. Um, I'm going to do another video on what I call the slow drip resources as well. There's certain things in the game that there's really really no way to speed up uh, in any reliable way. Things like the rogue store faction, it is just a long dripping road that you need to just kind of do properly every day and try and maximize every day. Uh, the Bajoran for people in your mid thirties and later, that's another one. You need to just be doing your Bajoran faction every day, all these tasks every day in order to keep up with them because there's no it's hard to catch up on that later. There's a lot of buildings that fall in that category now. The Syndicate is another big one that falls in that category. That's gotten a little better because of the Mantis, but there's no reliable way to speed this up. You can buy Syndicate packs, but the cost of them compared to what you get out of them is completely insane. I would never suggest that anyone buy it, you, as a general rule, never buy advancement uh, in the first place. If you're going to buy something, buy something that uh, you can't get otherwise, like 
something that's just paywall locked, don't buy advancement because you're just going to get stuck further down the road faster um, because you tried to buy ahead. So that's basically the idea behind it. Uh, so look at your own gameplay, plot what your kind of long-term or interim goal is. It's hard to plan like, you know, a year ahead or something. Uh, and there's always going to be new things added to the game, uh, changed in the game resourcing is going to be different and whatever so it's hard to fully predict but you can see like a few levels down the road and say you know my real goal is i want that ship unlocked and usually it's going to be a ship that there's some ship that you want and that's your next tier of advancement and you want to be doing that and then consider where you're at what your current ship is what resources you're consuming for that ship what resources you need to consume for your buildings and then try and plan to a ship that doesn't disrupt that. So if your current strongest ship is an explorer, then it's unlikely that your next ship, like that your epic unlock is gonna be the Enterprise because you're already consuming a lot of the resources you're gonna to want to put into that new ship. It would be nice to be saving those uh, as you go along. So if you're using something that is primary gas and you can be aspiring to something that is primary ore, then that uses ore crystal, then that's probably a better, stronger way to go because you're going to be able to save and conserve that off to the side while you're on your way to that without having to sacrifice your primary ship to do it. Um, and then, of course, look at the cost of the buildings. What things do you have left? Is it mostly cannons you need to upgrade? Is it most, which are gas? Is it mostly the research, which is gas? Is it dock, dockyards, crystal? that sort of thing. What are my main things that I need to be saving versus what can I be spending and, and then plan out with that. So just wanted to introduce that as a concept because I think a lot of people, as you progress along, particularly when it comes to things like research and ship upgrades, like the, our end goal is you want to make your ship stronger because your ship is kind of the thing that does stuff but your ship can become a complete black hole for resources and you can end up stealing things that ultimately really slow down your progression to that next level uh, of ship. So if you end up spending too much on say a Centurion or something at that level, or you try and take your Epic all the way to tier nine before you get to level 40 or something, then you may just be massively slowing down your transition into deep space uh, and into those higher levels when you could have gone quicker to those levels and now you don't need three-star resources for your buildings anymore. Now you don't need three-star resources for your research anymore. So all of it can go into your old ship while you're now getting to the point of a, of a level 42 uncommon, something like that. So just plan out what your path is uh, that's basically all I'm saying, I guess. Figure out what things are the real constraint for you. Because in a game like this that has like 40 different resources at some point, there's going to be one or two that end up bottlenecking everything you're trying to do. And you want to know what those are going to be so that you don't accidentally spend those. And so that when you have something where there's a choice between what we would like, so things like ticketed events where they give you a free ticket, um, for something and you can choose one of three things, you're going to know way ahead of time, every time this comes up, I'm going to pick the crystal one because it's the crystal that I need that's going to be my long-term blocker. Or every time I pick this, it's going to be the gas one I need because I'm behind in research and gas is a much more consumed thing in the research trees uh, than the other ones. So things like that you can plan out. Uh, well ahead of time, and it's really going to lead you into a better position in the long run. I think the days uh, of old advice of like hardcore camping at certain levels are a little bit outdated now. I think there's only two levels that you really want to be super prepared at, and they're 39 and 49. Uh, because that's when you're crossing from one into a completely different resource pool. But all the old advice of camping at 29, 34, different levels like that, I don't think are really uh, at play anymore. And I think you're better off always planning for progression because progression unlocks the next things that time gate something else. So um, getting to like 
into your mid 30s now unlock so many of these specialty ships that you need to get to start building them in the long run as well and each of them seems to come with another refinery that gives you additional resources uh, and additional officers additional options things like that so it's no longer a matter of holding yourself back until you're ready you want to kind of rush towards those things in a sensible way still uh, to be able to start unlocking the slow drip of those new things um, and then incorporate that into your your own critical path on, on what you need to do. So anyway, uh, that's really all I wanted to say. Just think of your current situation, your current goal, try and plot that sort of thing out, whether it's in your head or explicitly, what are the actual costs that it takes to get here? And is what I'm doing actually in line with what I need to do in order to get there smoothly? Or is something I'm doing intentionally delaying, not well, unintentionally delaying myself from getting there. So. Thanks. Talk to you later.